2 Timothy 1.10 says this. You don't have to turn there. But 2 Timothy 1.10 says, Now is made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. He abolished death. Hallelujah. Might say, well, why are so many people perishing in it? That's, that's what we're about to get into. I mean, why are we all dressed up? With all our armor and all our stuff. Right? Where are we going? What needs to be done? Now, people have come up with all kind of ideas, and some of them just goofy, about what spiritual warfare is. And there's a lot of goofy and, 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 and wrong ideas, erroneous, about who the devil is and what evil spirits are and what they're doing. Anything you think you believe about this, uh, make yourself find scripture for it. Right? Where's the scripture for what you believe? But we're seeing this very clearly and plainly. Go to 2 Corinthians again, the fourth chapter, please. 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, and the first verse. 2 Corinthians 4, 1 says, Seeing we've received this ministry as we've received mercy, we faint not. Keep going. We've renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. There is nothing more devilish than a lie. There's nothing more of the devil than a lie. God has never been a partner to any kind of falsehood. It is impossible for God to lie. Impossible. Can't happen. Has never happened, never will. Anything that has anything to do with a lie is of the devil. Not God. Right? Friends, you need to despise lying. I didn't say liars. You can love liars and hate the lies. You love the people. We already talked about people's not really your problem. Right. It's that lying devil. Yeah. Right? Yes, sir. And lying spirits. But by manifestation of what? The truth. the truth. Commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Keep going. If our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. The, the scripture says in 1 John that the whole world lies under the power of the evil one. The whole world lies under darkness. Every unsaved person is sitting in bondage in darkness and doesn't realize it. They are believing lies. They are convinced of things that are simply not real and not true and not right. Think about how many people are living and dying believing there's no God, there's no heaven, there's no hell. Are they living in a dream world? They're living in a fantasy world. They're living in a construct of darkness. You don't just live in a geographical location. You live in your heart and your mind, in your awareness. Right? And the Bible talked, Jesus talked about this. He said, beware that you're, what you're seeing is not darkness. Because if, if darkness is in you, you don't see anything. You stumble when you walk. Oh, but if the light is in you, your whole being is full of light. Hallelujah. We are the children of light. The unsaved are the children of darkness. There are two kingdoms. Spiritually, there are only two kingdoms. Only two. The kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. And the only way you get in the kingdom of light is to be born again. I said to be born again. And we have been translated. Woo! We moved. We've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. The kingdom, this is the kingdom of light. Yeah. Hallelujah. The kingdom of light. The kingdom of truth. 
If our gospel good news be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. Keep reading. In whom the God of this world has done what? Blinded the minds of them which believe not. If he blinded them, they're in darkness. Right? This refers to not seeing light. Blinded the minds of them which believe not, unless the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who's the image of God, should shine unto them. Oh my. Keep reading. We preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. Keep going. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Oh man, this is bigger. This is way bigger than your head is getting right now, I assure you. But your heart can lay hold of it by faith. You can just take it all in by faith and get excited and your head go, what, what, what are we excited about? You say, just, you'll catch on later on. It's, it's amazing. It's wonderful. Why did Jesus come? For this purpose with the Son of God manifested that he might destroy or undo or loosen people from the works of the devil. What did the devil do? What did he do? What has he done? He didn't just come and grab everybody and destroy everybody because he's so powerful. He can't do that. He's been stripped. He's been spoiled. What he can do is lie. And he is the best liar, the most developed liar, the most successful liar in the universe. He is good at it. He's been practicing it for we don't know how long, millennia or longer. And he has been completely successful. I shouldn't say completely. As far as world mentality control he is. But he's not ruling over me. How about you? He's not. I got out of his kingdom. I got out. Yeah. And I'm not going back. But you know what we are going to do? You know why we're so dressed up? Get some other people out. Get some other people out. Get them out. Hmm? We're all dressed up, breastplate, shield, helmet, sword of the spirit, gospel, go boots. Why? To go in and get another load out of darkness to undo what the devil has done in their lives. How do you do it? You do it with light. You do it with truth. You do it with the sword of the Spirit, which is, what's the sword? Don't get hung up on a literal sword. What is the sword? The Word of God. The Word of God. If you notice, these other pieces of armor are primarily defensive. They're to cover you, to protect you. The sword is not for that. The sword is to advance and to pierce something. Well, now, now I think you can go to John. Gospel account of John. John 1. This is where we're going to read some scriptures. Now, the gospel account of John, as well as 1 John, 2 John, 3 John. One of the big themes of these writings is light. Light and life. He keeps coming back, he keeps referring to them over and over again. In John 1 and 1, John 1 and 1, in the beginning, heard somebody trying to speculate the other day, when did time start? 
in the beginning. That's it. <laughs> That's when it started. In the beginning was the Word. Huh? What is the sword of the Spirit? Come on, help me out. Sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Keep reading for a few verses here. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, made by, by what? By who? By the Word, by the Lord, by God. And without Him was not anything made that was made. Hmm? The planets, you, in Him was what? Life. And the life was the light of men. Somebody say, the life was the light. Keep reading. And the light did what? Shines in darkness. You know why we can see one another in here right now? Light. There are no windows in, in this part. If the lights weren't on, couldn't see anything. You know why we can see each other? Light. The light shines in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. Now, this King James comprehended translation, I don't know that it was the very best. This same word in the same King James Bible is translated overtake. Overtake. Same word, same Greek word. You know, it's, you wonder why sometimes they didn't just uh, translate it consistently. The same way every time. But anyway, I think they did a good job. I like the King James. Don't misunderstand me. I like it a lot. I use it all the time. But here I don't know if comprehended. Well, when you hear it, does it make you want to shout about uh, the, the darkness didn't comprehend it? You want to go, glory to God. No, you, you think, huh. I said the same exact Greek word here translated comprehended. For instance, in 1 Thessalonians 5, 4, is translated overtake. The darkness couldn't overtake it or overcome it. That's right. That's right. Now light can undo darkness, but darkness can't overpower light. Never has. Never will. Just with these lights we got on in here right now. If the railroad ran right beside the building and we had a thousand sealed cars of pitch black darkness and one by one we rolled them up and pumped all that darkness in here. What would happen? You would never know it. I said you would never know it. Why? Because the light shines and displaces and pushes away and out and overcomes and undoes the darkness, but the darkness can't do anything with the light. It can't overcome it. It can't overpower it. It can't overtake it. That's right. Have you ever, even at midnight, no moon, walk into your house and flip on the light switch and darkness roll about halfway back? <laughs> and then darkness and light proceed to fight and struggle and you go, man, I hope the light wins today. No, you never have, you never will, because darkness cannot overtake light. Darkness can only exist in the absence of light. When the light is not there. Satan has blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the glorious light of the gospel should shine unto them. All the evil spirits, the devil and all his cohorts are agents of darkness. 
what can they do with light? I mean the devil and every one of his beings combined cannot stop light. Can't. Can't. All they can do is function in the shadows and all they can do is do their best to keep their hands over everybody's eyes and says, don't look at the light. Don't look at the light. Don't, don't go towards the light. No, no, no. Don't look at the light. <laughs> and if you say, shut up, I want to look at, it. oh, glory to God, then he has lost. I said he has lost because that light, that truth will make you free. And there's nothing the devil and the regions of the dam can do about it. Nothing. Somebody say nothing, 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 nothing they can do about it. Well, why then is there so much, if it's that simple, why is there so much darkness prevailing over the planet? One of the biggest reasons is a whole lot of people don't want to see. They don't want to see. The Bible says their eyes they have closed. Lest they should see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their heart, and be converted, and I should heal them. Is the Lord ready to deliver them and save them and heal them? But what are millions saying? I don't believe that. I don't want that. Don't talk to me about it. And if you do that, then you're going to sit in bondage, in deception, in darkness, and believe lies perhaps until you die. It's sad. We're not in control of all that. But we are on mission to launch light missiles. Huh? set off light bombs <laughs> huh? Yeah. to advance yeah. with the armor of light yes, and with the piercing sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, which is the light. Yes. Oh, somebody say, I believe it. I believe Thanks it. be unto God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Skip on down to... Uh, John 3, 16. Anybody know John 3, 16? God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But what's the catch? You got to believe on him. How will they believe in him in whom they've not heard? They won't. How shall they hear without a preacher? They won't. What's the preacher doing? What's he preaching? The light, the word, the good news. Keep, God, keep reading verse 17. God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He came to undo That's right. what the devil has done. Verse 18. He that believes on him is not condemned. Is that you? Yes. Somebody said, no, there, there's no condemnation to me. Yes. I got my righteousness on. Yes. You can't make me feel ashamed. You can't make me feel guilty. I got my armor on. Every one of us in here has done things, made mistakes, not done things. We wouldn't want everybody to know. We might be embarrassed about for other people to see and know. Every one of us. But I tell you this, if you found out a mistake I made, you can't make me feel guilty. Because I'm either washed or I'm not. I'm either clean or I'm not. I'm either forgiven or I'm not. Right? And if he doesn't see it, why should I be so concerned about what you think? If the Lord sees me righteous and clean and holy in the very righteousness of Christ and the blood of the Lamb, I'm not condemned. But he that believes not is condemned already because he's not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. He's in that darkness of condemnation and guilt and shame and, and death. Keep going. And this is the condemnation. What's the condemnation? That light is coming to the world. 
And what was the problem? Men loved darkness rather than light. What'd they say? I don't want to see the light. Leave me alone. I like it dark in here. <laughs> Spiritually, people all over are doing this. Because their deeds were evil, they didn't want to change. They wanted to believe lies that what they're doing is okay. Instead of being willing to change. Verse 20, everyone that does evil hates the light. It's an irritation to them. If you don't want to see the light, that's why you stay away from church, man. You despise preachers. You cuss when they come on TV. Hmm? And if there's one thing the devil hates worse than a preacher, it's a prosperous preacher. Oh, he hates a, he hates a prosperous, successful preacher. <laughs> but I got my armor on. How about you? I got any, got any successful witnesses out here? Come on. Successful. You don't have to be called to, to be in the fivefold ministry to be a witness and to be a light and to be a proclaimer of truth and what God's done for you. And the more successful you are, the more resources you have to get that light out. Neither comes to the light lest his deeds should be reproved. Keep going. He that does truth, what does he do? Comes to the light that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. Hearts are being shown. People whose heart is right, they want the truth. Even if it shows them up that they need to change, they want the truth. Somebody said out loud, I love the truth. More than anything or anybody more than getting my way, doing what I think. Lord, show, show up my life with the light. Whatever I need to change, I want to change. I want the truth. Hallelujah. But people whose heart is not right, they don't want to hear the truth. They know it's not right, but they want to believe it is all right. They don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to see the truth. They close their eyes. They love darkness more than light, so they will stay in darkness, which means they will stay under the control of the evil one. They don't realize what they're doing. People talk, talk about, well, I, I'm being my own man. That's a joke. <laughs> no, you are a slave under darkness. The only free ones are the ones in Christ. Walking in the light. That's the only free people on the planet. I believe I'm looking at some of them. Oh, glory to God. Makes me want to sing and shout. Hallelujah. I'm a soldier of the light. I'm a child of glory. I'm a soldier of the light. And I'm here for a good fight. How many know millions need the lies of darkness slapped out of them with the powerful anointed word of the living God? How many would acknowledge the word of truth slapped the darkness out of me one day? Huh? And brought me to my senses? Is that what the other billions on the planet need? Just as, just as much. Just as much. Make plans to join us for the 2015 Week of Increase with Brother Keith Moore, October 5th through the 9th at Faith Life Church in Branson, Missouri. Services will be each evening at 6.30 p.m. and children's ministry will be provided. For more information or to join our live internet broadcast, please visit our website at flcbranson.org or call us at 417-334-9233.